weeks, not knowing what was going on. Then, after endless tests, proddings, pokings in very intimate areas, ultrasounds, biopsies, scan after scan after scan, all the while thinking I very well might be dying, I finally received my official diagnosis. I am now disabled. Oh no, not one of those lazy, faking, scrounging disabled people that you read about in the sun. No, no, a real life disabled person who now needs some help from the state if I'm going to be able to support myself. Well, how lucky that employment and support allowance has been developed by the state for that very purpose. And how easy the system is to navigate! <laughs> But for those of you who do, for some reason, find it difficult to wade through page after page of endless jargon in small print, I, having 15 years publishing experience, have written a brief step-by-step -step guide on how to claim employment and support allowance. Stage one. Phone up Job Centre Plus and request your ESA forms. <clears throat> oh, well thank you very much. Well that was relatively painless. <laughs> Stage two. Phone up Job Centre Plus again and inquire as to why you've been sent forms for housing benefit and not ESA. Request new relevant forms. Stage three. Upon receiving these forms, psych yourself up to spend an entire 24 hours interpreting the jargon and spending up all the energy that you've carefully stored up over the previous week. Send off forms. Stage four. Wait by the phone for a response. Stage five. Carry on waiting. Stage six. Get fed up of waiting and phone the Department for Work and Pensions to find out where exactly your forms could be. <sighs> Stage 7. Request new forms because your previous forms have been lost. And start all over again. Yay! Stage 8. Just to make 
sure this incident doesn't occur a second time, get somebody to push you to your nearest job centre and fax your new forms through to two separate numbers, because of course this will ensure that somebody will receive them. Surely. Stage nine. Phone up the job centre you've sent them to just to ensure their safe arrival. <coughs>
because you only earned six points on the medical assessment because you were able to do all of the exercises. Ignoring the fact that you could only do them once, with great difficulty, had to have a huge break, and had to be carted out of the room afterwards. You need a further neuf points in order to qualify as a bona fide disabled person. Stage 20. Thanks to help from workingbenefits.org.uk and their guides on the point scoring system, you find out how to appeal the decision made by the DWP. And you start the long, arduous journey on the appeal to reinstate your ESA. Oh, be sure to phrase the letter that you write in exactly the right way, or they'll choose not to understand it. Stage 21. Guess what? Wait. Stage 22. Travel two hours there and two hours back to attend a three-minute meeting in which the tribunal service asks you one question in order to ascertain <coughs> that you obviously warrant the nine extra points to qualify for ESA. At the end of this extensive interview, they ask you, now, would you like to carry on? It's just that there's no point in tiring you out unnecessarily. Obviously, they think that this whole process has been a relaxing spa treatment. You are much more ill now than you were when you started. Stage 23. What would the DWP challenging your validity as a disabled person, but also endless bombardments in the press about disability benefit fraud and the like? You, of course, start to doubt yourself. Well, I mean, I've only got no limbs. I mean, if you say that I'm fine, then I probably am. <laughs> I don't want to be a drain on, on the taxpayer. I've only been a taxpayer myself for 35 years. <laughs> I probably don't qualify. Stage 24. Foolishly believe that it's actually good news that you can finally muster up the strength to work for four hours a week and report this fact to the DWP through a permitted work form. See that? Yeah, that's the can of worms you've just opened. Because, stage 25, your claim is now disallowed on the grounds that you're working 16 plus hours a week. You wish you could work 16 plus hours a week, but you can't, which is why you're claiming in the first place. to do is to contact your local MP. They get much more respect than us mere mortals and their claims on your behalf actually go to a completely different department. So please oh, be sure to contact your local demigod before it's too late. Stage 27. Continue on the incredibly surreal journey through the bowels of the DWP to at last be told that all of this unfortunate incident of having your support stripped away from you is due to a computer glitch. <coughs> Somebody just pressed the big red button that shouldn't be pressed. And if it's pressed, it generates a letter that shouldn't be generated. And if it is generated, it shouldn't be printed. And if it is printed, it certainly shouldn't be sent out. But it is sent out, of course. So here we are at stage 28. Compensation. Don't worry, you will receive compensation for the trauma that the DWP has put you through. <sighs> Somebody will be in touch about a discretionary payment. But of course nobody does get in touch. But you do find the sum total of 25 whole pounds in your bank account. <gasps> Don't spend it all at once and spend the day trying not to find that incredibly insulting. <sighs> well, that concludes my little guide on claiming support, uh, employment and support allowance. Thank you very much for listening. I'm going to go and lie down for the next year or two. <laughs> Thank you very much.